The following is a presentation of the Matt Talk Podcast Network. The mind of Pat Papalizio is a wondrous thing. And for you Pack Wrestling fans, you'll get to go inside the mind of the skip each and every episode here on the Pack Mentality Pop Ins Podcast. Now, here's your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Ryan Reinhardt. Happy holidays, Wolfpack Wrestling fans, and welcome to a brand new episode of the Pack Mentality Poppins Podcast, episode number 58. I'm your host, NC State Director of Athletics Digital Communications, Brian Reinhardt, and I'm joined once again by the head coach of the Wolfpack, Pat Pabalizia. Brian, always good to see you. Pat, you're amped up. I'm excited. This is going to be a great episode. We are in the holiday season. We're sitting here in your office up at WB taping this podcast, and you surrounded yourself with tins among tins of, I can only assume, cookies, brownies, popcorns, real cornucopia. Caught your hand in the cookie jar. I don't know what you're talking about. I was going to say, it's, it's just a real cornucopia of Papalizio treats. Yeah. Full holiday mode. Where would the holidays take yourself? Well... We'll be heading out to Dallas this uh, this weekend. Come back. Actually, going to spend a couple of days right in Raleigh. Got a couple things going on with the move, so I got a couple of days to do that. Um, yeah, it's going to be a fast little break, but I'll be right here in Raleigh. Big move. You're moving up to that big mansion up on the top yeah, of the right. hill. Yeah, maybe it's a little more a little more land out there. Hopefully, so, a housewarming the party country. for. Yeah, we're party? definitely going to have one. Okay. Will you actually come by? Yeah, because I, I know you, I know you want gifts. It's got to be poker. Only for you to come by, it's got to be a poker game. We're going to get to some poker in a little bit, but your squad just finished final exams. How did the academic semester go? Uh, we're still getting some scores in right now with, the, with grades and whatnot. So everybody's, for the most part, coming through, which I like seeing are a lot of A's and B's. And we got a pretty rock solid group right now academically, so... We just make sure everybody finishes on a good note. Obviously, today being the last day uh, for those to get submitted. So we'll we'll get an update here soon, but we're in good shape right now overall. And I think I project this this year to be one of the best academic years that we've had in a, in a, a little while here. So looking forward to seeing them all come in. A few more practices before you let your guys head out of town and then reconvening back in Raleigh in late December, training and gearing up for the Southern Scuffle, which is going to take place January 1st through 2nd. The guys get a nice little break for the holidays, but the Scuffle is one of the top tournaments every year. Action is really going to gear up here right after the holidays. Yeah, we'll get a little break. And like you said, we'll we'll come back, train for a few days. And head out to Chattanooga and uh, get to wrestle on the first and second. And I, I've already noticed that you've elected to not travel with us that trip. So I don't know if you're. And I know I kn- I've checked the other athletic schedules, and I know this year that you're not traveling somewhere. So I'm just saying the commitment is being asked. I do appreciate that you asked me three times, and I gave you the same answer. Yeah, I figured third time's a charm with yeah. you. Okay. So <laughs> speaking of the Skyrim Suffolk, it's a little bit different than Cliff Keen in Las Vegas, which you guys just went to. And Cliff Keen was an open tour, or excuse me, the Suffolk was an open tournament. You can take more than your 10 stars. Still early, I know, but what does the entrant list look like for NC State? Yeah, we're going to probably take our 10 guys, uh, minus Trombley, who is still recovering from... Uh, a little setback at, at Vegas, but nothing that if we wanted him to wrestle, he could. So we'll, we'll just kind of, kind of regroup with him and uh, get him ready for the run for the late part of the season. Um, and that adds taking another guy still trying to figure out 49 and heavyweight. So we're going to take everybody that we can to, uh, to kind of see who wants that weight class. Cause right now no one seems to really truly step up and, and separate themselves. So I'm going to leave it again up to those guys. Um, Tyree's shown some interest to go up to heavyweight to challenge, and uh, we're going to give him a chance if he wants to do that. So those two weights kind of are taking up a lot of our extra guys. Renan will be back wrestling there. Um, Jacob's going to be wrestling up at, at 84, and I think Barnes is going as well. So we'll have some extra guys going out there to, to wrestle and continue to get better, but ultimately really want to see you know continued success across the board, but really – kind of establish who our starter is going to be a 49 and heavyweight 
And before we get to even more NC State wrestling team news, we have to talk about some former Wolfpack wrestlers. And just like you said, you're going down there. It's going to be a huge weekend of wrestling down in Dallas as the senior nationals will be taking place. And many NC State Wolfpack Wrestling Club ties in this freestyle action. And this tournament, it's one of the main places for the U.S. Olympic trials, which is going to be held at Penn State in the spring. And the top five placers this weekend will advance to the Olympic trials. Now, for NC State, Nick Wisdowski and Mike Machiavello and Mox at 97 now. They've both qualified for the U.S. Olympic trials and will not be in action this weekend in Dallas. But lots of NC State representation, eight with Wolfpack ties. Tommy Gant, he got the third seat at 74 kilos. Quentin Godley, he's at 74 kilos. Lee Davis at 86. Current volunteer coach Timmy McCall, he's up at 97, is the seventh seed. You have Jacob Casper, who also trains with us. And three of your former guys, Sean Fowles, Pete Renda, Mike Kosoy. Packed weekend of action for NC State and the Wolfpack Wrestling Club. Huge tournament. These guys are trying to get one step closer to qualifying for Tokyo. Great weekend of action for people, and it's going to be a fun weekend to follow. Definitely. Anybody that's uh, a wrestling fan, this is a weekend where there's not much action going on in the college scene, so everybody can turn their attention to this. And fortunately for us, there's a lot of NC State guys, ties that, like you said, are going to be wrestling. Some obviously still training here and others moved on coaching in other places or training in other places. So it'll be good to watch all these guys compete this weekend and uh, looking forward to getting more guys through to uh, State College when the Olympic trials comes up in April. And I was looking over that entrant list this morning. There's a few current college guys, both ones that are taking Olympic registers and the ones that are competing. Was there any thought to sending of your current guys? Uh, we've had a lot of recent success lately in freestyle highlighted by Nick Rena and making Final X and both Hydleys. They've been on U.S. World Teams. Any thought to taking current guys? Yeah, there was some talk about it. Obviously, with Rena not uh, being able to really train all year. It was kind of one of those decisions. Let's ease our way back into the college season. Um, the other two guys right now that would be ready for this would be Hayden and Trent and Hayden coming off the junior worlds. This is a good time for him to just focus on college. And, and I think Hayden right now is kind of in between two weight classes and we talked about it and it, it really wouldn't be beneficial right now until we can commit to either going up or down. Um, so we want to focus just on this college season, get through it. And these guys, what I like about these guys is they, they set their goals high for, for college and also have goals to wrestle post college. But right now, I think the main goal is to go out, win NCAA titles for these guys this year. Great tie-in talking about the Wolfpack Wrestling Club and another event right around the corner. In fact, it's going to be on Saturday, January 11th, the annual casino night, NC State. It's going to host nationally ranked Princeton at one. Then later in the evening from seven to 10 casino night over in Tally. Great opportunity to come out, meet the coaches, meet former wrestlers who are going to be back in town. And Pat, this is a great chance to support the guys that are making that push for the Olympics the next summer. Yeah, no doubt about it. It works as a, you know, helps us continue to grow resources for our RTC. But more importantly, this is a great, enjoyable event, fun, a lot of, different games to be played there uh i always enjoy taking your chips and poker so that'll be a good one it's all for charity yeah it is for charity but it's still competition to me when it comes <laughs> down to, um no it'll be good we we have a lot of good prizes out there and just a lot of good people coming that uh enjoy the night but it'll be action-packed between a dual meet and uh casino night you can register now i know the early bird special is going on until new year's so you can get in cheaper right now very easy to claim your spot at the poker table or next to me on the roulette wheel just visit wolfpackwrestlingclub.org a lot of time and planning goes into this event from our great supporters so please join us on january 11th for casino night by registering right now again it's wolfpackwrestlingclub.org and one more bit of team news before we turn back to the action on mat you recently had a change on your staff after over five seasons as your director of operation. Melissa Simmons is moving on from the college wrestling world and joining the Wolfpack as the new director of ops. Uh, Ian Asale is going to be joining us. So first, we have to start with Melissa. She declined to be interviewed on this podcast, which just fits right in there after she hosted one time. <laughs> but uh had to get that in there. But you talk about a behind the scenes role with Wolfpack Wrestling. She recently completed her master's degrees, and she's going to be moving back to Oklahoma and taking a job outside of wrestling. From firsthand experience, I saw how she ran the show around here, both 
on and off the match and how much she really contributed and elevated NC State wrestling. And she's going to be missed by everybody involved with the Wolfpack. Talk about her role with you guys, how she's going to be missed, and just how much she's helped build this program in her five years here at NC State. Yeah, no doubt about it. She's going to be missed. She's had an immediate impact from day one when she came in here. And I think if you look back, you know, the norm was hiring former wrestlers to take these director of ops positions. We were thinking outside the box with somebody that had a good background and then a work ethic like her and just a totally different mindset than what we were used to. And I think that helped us tremendously to continue to grow our program. And then it got to a point where she was so in sync with everything we were doing. I mean, it, it made our lives easier to just focus on the guys coaching and she was able to run a lot of the stuff behind the scenes. So, you know, you can't replace that. And uh, it's going to be a challenge for us, you know, over the next couple months to get things back in sync. But it is, uh, again, as, as an organization, we are very thankful that we had the time with her and uh, she elevated this program. So it's uh, it's a tough, tough Tough gig to, to fill and as far as her role, but we're excited for the future and what lies ahead. I only want to know who's giving me my per diem money now. Uh, you're going to have to come see me, boss. <laughs> I got it. I actually, the last two. So, yeah, that's part of it, though, is, you know, we all have to fill that void right now. And that's, you don't realize what somebody's doing until they're gone. And I already feel that when I'm going to the bank and getting dimes and quarters and putting in an envelope like Melissa did. It's not going to be as organized or well mapped out as she did, but make sure everybody's eating and you won't go hungry on the road. Glad you're pulling your weight a little more. You yeah. must be a little bit busy because you haven't answered my text yeah, for two now days. Now you know why, because I was standing in line at the bank trying to get the per diem money for you. <laughs> All right. <laughs> now we're going to turn. Joining your program, Ian Asale. Ian's been in the college wrestling world for quite some time and brings a whole lot of experience to your staff. He was at local Ravenscroft High School and assistant coach at Bucknell and more recently had stints with Bison Legend Wrestling and Dark Horse Wrestling in Charlotte at the club level. What makes Ian a good fit for NC State Wrestling? Yeah, I think you look, you know, one of the things you got to do when uh, you're making a decision and hiring somebody is you got to see what your needs are. And anytime we've had a coach move on, which we're going to continue to have, if you're having success, guys are going to move on like when Obi did and Frank and it just... I think that's healthy for a program because it shows these guys want to move on and, and be better. So we'll continue to adjust and adapt everybody's roles. And, you know, we never try to replace anybody, but we try to evolve and do some different things. And I think Ian's role here is going to be a little different than what Melissa was doing because it's not the same type setting that we're going to have and what he's wanting to do and capable of doing. So, you know, we'll keep adjusting things, but if you look at his background in, in wrestling and, and if you talk to anybody, his reputation is as good as anybody I've ever seen. And his connections run very deep because as a director of ops, you got to have all those ties when you need to get get some things done. Um, but no, he's going to bring a lot of energy. He's one of the guys that's out there. And, and I've watched him over the years and the the growth that he's done with clubs and just producing athletes too at the same time and i'm not talking just wrestling just the kind of people that any one of the guys that's ever represented his club is a first class citizen so i know he mirrors our mentality and, and our culture and everything we're about so it's going to be a good fit it will be different and sometimes you know change is scary at first but i think it's it's one of those right now our program needs a little bit of a, a little change in that aspect so we're willing to take this on and uh, excited for for the future of it all right, let's turn to some team results and such. Um, I honestly, I can't remember the last time you were on your own podcast here, so I guess we can just hit on a few of the more recent bouts. But a lot of wrestling right before this holiday break. Quick turnarounds. NC State went out to Las Vegas for the Cliff Keen, and just a few days later, bus over to Boone to wrestle at App State. And bus rides with this team, they're a bit rough. Donnie Vincent's DVD collection is painful. Yes. I'd rather listen to... Music, then watch some of those. His DVDs are painful. So it sounds like we got to suspend him on the bus trips. I don't, I don't know DVD. if Donnie listens to this podcast, but. Well, if he is, he's yeah. done. We'll give him a uh, three month suspension. So I'll Tell take you. it through the season. Lord, painful. But quick turnaround, coming back from a tough tournament in Las Vegas to compete against a very good in state foe. The pack down the Mountaineers 24 to 12, winning seven of the 10 matches, including six of the first seven to jump out to a big lead. How would you rate the performance at App State? I thought it was good. You know, they, first of all, they got a really good program over there. That's they work hard, and those guys are fight 
every for every point. So we knew we were going to be in a in a good intense battle up there. But coming off Vegas, you know, was my bigger concern. That tournament is a little challenging. You get a lot of matches in two day weigh in, travel across the country, then you come back and you got finals. So there was a little bit of that. You know, and I want to put these guys in tough situations, and that's exactly what this was, is a quick turnaround. Some guys were still a little banged up from Vegas wrestling six, seven matches. And uh, I thought we responded really well. I thought the guys went out, wrestled really hard, and uh, kept attacking to put points on the board. And, uh, you know, we were able to win a lot of those matches that, and separate ourselves with some bonus point wins. And it was good overall. It was, it was a good performance going into the break. The big news coming out of that App State duel was the return of Richard Jr. Nick Renan to the PAX lineup up at 197. As we've talked before, Nick had offseason surgery for an injury he suffered last year, and this was his first bout back. What did you see from Nick in his win? He had to lock up a cradle late, but obviously good to get him back out on that mat. Definitely. I mean, he'll admit and I'll admit it was an ugly match for him. Um, and it wasn't anything to do with wrestling. I think anytime you come off a, a surgery, you're, your mind is going to take some time and mentally to get focused. And that's what we saw. It was, believe it or not, it was a challenge for him to get down to weight the first time. So we saw a little bit of that. You saw a little bit of nerves, just wondering if he, you know, body's going to hold up. And I'm just glad we got that out of the way. That was the goal for me was to get him and get that match out of the way because this last week in practice, he's looked really good and, and just a different level where he's been. Um, and, and trust and confidence that his knee's in a good spot because we've got great doctors and we've, we even pushed the start, you know, we even pushed it a couple weeks later just to be super safe on that. So no, it was good. I, we, we, he knows he's got to get better. We got to get in better shape. Um, some of it was anxiety and nerves, but got a win and, uh, we'll get ready for the scuffle and looking forward to seeing him as time goes on. Cause he's going to see some pretty good kids here down the road and, uh, it'll be a good challenge for him, but I, I like where we're at and we need him hitting from all cylinders cause he's capable of winning the national title. And if me and Pat isn't exciting enough for you right now, you just wait. Nick Renan, he's a wild card. He's oh, going to join us later on the podcast. I can't wait to listen to this one then. I want you to interview him, really. I would love to. I, I'll give him some good questions. <laughs> one other thing I want to touch on, um, a pair of newcomers to your lineup at the lower weights, a pair of redshirt freshmen, Jacob Camacho, Jarrett Tromley. They're manning 125 and 133 right now. And we talk about the transition from high school to college and even the transition from being a redshirt to being in your lineup. Both of these guys redshirted last year. This is their first go around. What are you seeing from Camacho and Trombley very early on? I see just the mentality that they have, and they're they're both two really good competitors, and they work really hard, and they care, and they want to win. So I think anytime you get freshmen in your lineup, you're going to see a little bit of a roller coaster where you know one week's going to be really good, next week maybe they're a little off. Um, that's just part of the game here in your freshman campaign. Um, so, no, I, I see these guys starting to improve right now. I mean, Camacho's had a little bit of a, a slow start, but I know you're going to see a lot from him second semester. He's a gamer. He's a winner. Uh, and he's working on some things right now that are going to make a big difference for him when it comes time to compete. And, and you know, I think sometimes you roll off a redshirt season and think it's going to be just as easy, and it's totally different going week to week. Uh, Trombley has made a big jump this past summer. And has been a, a great addition to the to the lineup. And once we get him back um, back here, one hundred percent, you know, he's just a little, little dinged up. Nothing that won't stop him from wrestling if we need him right now. But I'd rather my goal is to get everybody back to one hundred percent. Especially if we have depth, we can wrestle some other guys in the meantime um, as needed. Great recap. Great wrestling recap. Is Die Hard a Christmas movie? That was a question for you. I don't know. You tell me. Do you know Die Hard? Yeah, I do, but I don't know. I don't. I don't know too many movies with the, that, that. That question went off spectacular. Yeah, I didn't know we were doing the the quiz questions here. Th thanks a lot for bombing here at the end. But, yeah, uh, <laughs> Pat. Thanks for taking the time from your holiday snack and just catch us up. Wrestling's always fun in the fall, but wow, it really gears up here after New Year's, including number twelve Princeton coming to Reynolds Coliseum on January eleventh. Order those tickets now. Let's pack Reynolds red against the nationally ranked Tigers. Visit gopack.com slash buy tickets. Pat, enjoy your brief time off. Go out. Go recharge those batteries. Same with you. Don't be a Scrooge during Christmas either.
Thanks, Pat. Now stay tuned. Nick Renan is about to join the podcast. Ratings are about to spike now here on the Pack Mentality Poppins as the always entertaining and heavily opinionated Nick Renan joins us here before practice. Nick, that was a heck of an intro. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Yeah, it was a rough match, but got it done. So, Real life, you're Nick. Twitter, you're Rick. Now, for those that don't know you and judging by how many comments people make about your Twitter, they take it way too seriously. How would you describe your personality? Uh... My Twitter is definitely pretty similar to my actual personality. It's pretty sarcastic and very opinionated. And uh, I don't know. I wouldn't really take anything I'm tweeting ser- seriously because a lot of times I'll tweet things just to see who agrees with that opinion. But I don't actually think that, like, especially with stuff like the weight cut, like I'll I'll say things that like are completely outlandish, and then people will say, "Oh, you can't do that," and I'm like, "I'm, I'm not actually cutting that much weight." <laughs> so it throws people off. Now, it's fun to go on road trips with this team. I'm really quiet in real life outside of the podcast voice here, so I pick up and hear so much. A lot of times, you can be heard in the back, heated debate with teammates. Nick's hot takes. Any recent debates that you've embarked on? Uh, Me? Actually, I have a pretty good group chat going with me, uh, Malik McDonald, the Bullards, and the Morris Twins from last year. There's some alumni, but we got in a pretty heated debate yesterday about the uh, the impeachment results and the uh, we get we get into a lot of debates on there about different different uh especially with stuff going on at Flow right now where Willie's getting uh Willie just left and he's he's in a trial with Flow. We get into a lot of debates about stuff like that and uh I don't know, I I, I try to keep most of my opinions pretty pretty neutral and just but uh yeah, some people get upset with what I talk about. Flow loves your dad, by the way. Yeah, that they well they love him and they hate him. I don't okay. think they love him that much right now, but you know. Your dad's been kind of quiet lately. <laughs> yes, he has. He's been he's been working a lot and hiking a lot, and he uh, he went to the Bills game with uh, the Bills and Steelers game with uh, Willie and uh, Scott Green, and he's I, I think he was pretty upset about the result. Yeah. <laughs> he's a big Steelers big fan. Steelers fan? <laughs> yes. okay. I'm from Pittsburgh. Like, yeah, okay, he's, cool. uh, I he wasn't too happy about that. Now we're taping this episode of the podcast right before you head out of town for a bit. Where will the holidays take the Renans this year? Uh, I'm actually going home uh, to Texas. It's the first, not the fir- uh, first time I've had a break in a while, but definitely good to get home and uh, have a longer break with my family. Last time I was home, my sisters were kind of running around all over the place, you know, getting ready for college. And I, I have five sisters, so I think this time they'll all be home and my grandparents are going to be there. So it'll be the first time my whole family is together in a, in a while. So that'll be pretty cool. But, um, yeah, I'll be in Texas uh, at the same time as the World Team Trail, so I'll probably stop by there because it's like 30 minutes from me. So might as well. Five sisters, you got to get some good presents. Yeah. Uh, I get no presents yeah. every year. <laughs> my parents my parents get pretty good presents. My mom is very uh, – my mom's pretty uh, – heavily into Christmas right. gifts and stuff. My dad just kind of buys what he wants when he wants it. He doesn't really care. <laughs> now, I ask Pat all the time about you guys going home for Thanksgiving and Christmas, but from a student-athlete perspective, how do you handle your time away from Raleigh when it comes to training since you guys, you're in the middle of your season? Yeah, I mean, I don't have a great training situation in Texas. It's one of the reasons I left there in high school. Uh, so it's going to be a lot of, you know, going back to my old coaches uh, and wrestling and sparring with them, but not really too much live i guess i'm going to be working a lot on conditioning a lot of uh and then craven will send us home with a lifting schedule that i'll stick to pretty heavily other than that you know i'll probably try to get out when i'm at world team trials you know get a workout there and or not world team trials the senior nationals and see see if i can get some work in there but other than that it's it's pretty uh as far as wrestling talent goes in texas you gotta go pretty far out of your way to uh, get somebody who i can work with so How'd finals go? You're still environmental science science major? Uh, I'm actually, so I'm double majoring now in environmental science and marine science. My finals went pretty well. Uh, I liked all my classes. I did pretty well in my classes. So uh, I'm pretty excited about that, like after after college to start working with uh, restoring areas that have been destroyed. So it'd be cool. Go out in the ocean, rescue whales? Yeah, that'd be cool. I'd, I'd do something like that. Are you a Seinfeld fan? Uh, no. <laughs> Is that a reference to that? Yeah, George Costanza oh, was sorry. a marine biologist. I'm so that. sorry. You I probably weren't even born yet when Seinfeld was on. Maybe not. Probably not. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I wasn't a, not a big fan of that. But uh, you mentioned it already down Dallas. Before we talk to your return, I have to ask you, um, senior nationals, they're this weekend, U.S. Olympic trials, the bursts are on the line. Two summers ago, you were in Final X. Last summer, you had a miss because of injury. 
But right now, freestyle is in the news because of Tokyo. Do you miss freestyle right now? Do you think if you didn't get hurt, you'd be competing this weekend? Yeah, if I wasn't if I wasn't injured uh, and coming back right now, I definitely would be competing. I would have competed last year. Mm-hmm. Uh, it really hurt to see some of those guys that I know I'm better than go and do well, you know, internationally. And uh, I, it, it sucks. You know, I love freestyle. I love what it brings to the table for folk style. And I, I would have loved to compete last year. Um this year, just because I'm coming back right now, the, the focus is March. I mean, it would be great to go out and try to make a make an Olympic team. You know, free, if I wrestled this year, it might have actually been Greco. But um, you know, I, I I just have to prioritize March and prioritize my recovery over you know freestyle. There's gonna be plenty of time to wrestle in the future, so that's where I'm at right now. We have the injury. We have the return to talk about. But start us off freshman year, 174. Last year, 184. This year, 197. What are the challenges of being in different weight classes for you? Uh, I mean, moving from 174 to 184 is pretty easy. I was already cutting a good amount of weight, and I'd already wrestled in high school at 195. So going from 174 to 184, I basically just stopped cutting weight, and I you know, enjoyed wrestling, and I had the, my red shirt year, and I think it was really productive for me. So last year, uh, I moved up to 197. The guys are a little bit bigger, but they're kind of a lot slower. So I don't really think the transition is going to be too difficult, but it's definitely going to be interesting uh, dealing with guys who are bigger. Because um, I think the jump from 184 to 197 is a little bit more substantial than 174 to 184. But I don't think I'll have too much of an issue with it. We got a lot of guys in our room who have done well with that jump. You have Machiavella who went from 184 to 197. Uh, so seeing like guys like that, jump to 197 and do well, it gives me more confidence to do it myself. And I'm not too worried about it. Has it turned you more into a weight room guy? Yeah, I was lifting a lot this summer, a lot of, a lot of protein, a lot of, uh, hitting the, hitting the gym. So, and especially since I couldn't wrestle, it was basically like, I'd come in, do my rehab lift. And then that was my whole plan. And I just ate a lot of food ate a lot of like changed my diet up a little bit. And now my diet's changing to where I have to start losing weight again. So yeah, I got a healthy diet. Yeah, I got I got yeah. pretty heavy. So getting down the weight the first time was pretty tough for me, but it shouldn't be too much of an issue now. I was going to say fans are really concerned on Twitter about your weight cuts. Yeah, there I, was a little bit of concern <laughs> at App State. <laughs> there was concern at App State because there was a need to be concerned. I gained, <laughs> I gained too much weight. I was not expecting it to be so hard to get down to 197, and I kind of put it off till the last minute a little bit. And uh, yeah, I wasn't—I haven't really cut weight in a long time, so I uh, didn't do it the right way. And we were considering uh, just kind of—we were considering just waiting till the next week, I guess, uh, and wrestle just wrestle at scuffle. But I wanted to get out and wrestle a match and see how it felt, and I was tired. Yep, so <laughs> working on conditioning right now and. Uh, I think it's definitely better. My weights, I'm not more than 10, 7, 10 over now. So I'm trying to get back to where I was last year, where I was never more than uh, 6 or 7 over, which is I, th- I think is doable. What were the nerves like stepping out onto that mat after so many months off? Uh, I get, It was like a mix of excitement and nervousness because like I really want to be a part of the team this year because it's, it's going to be a phenomenal team. We've got a bunch of freshmen coming up who are – crushing it and then we have guys who are experienced like Hayden and Tariq who are gonna who are who have been proven and I really wanted to be a part of it and so like watching everyone wrestle up until now has been tough but then at the same time it's like I haven't wrestled anybody outside of our room in a long time um I don't know how my knee is gonna like fare like it's been fine but you know there's just so many things and then there's the crowd and there's the you know the putting on a singlet and actually going out there is completely different than being in the room, which is why we felt like it would be a good match to start there because uh, there's no pressure. There's no, like we lose that match. It's not a big deal. I win, not a big deal. So I, I thought it was, it was a lot of nervousness, but just basically just pumped to be back and ready to, ready to start getting better again. How was the gas tank? I, my legs were tired going into the match just from, I'd already worked out a couple of times a day because uh, I was going to say, your whole day that day, you weren't even at the hotel. You... Yeah, I had to go work out because yeah. I wasn't losing weight like I usually do. Like I usually jump on like a like a treadmill with a couple of sweatshirts on and run for 15 minutes and lose two or three pounds. And I was, it just took me a lot more than I was used to. So I wasn't really – I'll plan better next time and it'll be 
uh, a lot better weight cut. Um, but t- to be honest, like it was, uh, this shouldn't be something you really deal with if you're at this, you know, if you're at the level that we're, our team is at, you shouldn't be dealing with, uh, stuff like that. So it's just, it was, it was, uh, pretty s- simple mistake for me and easy fix, but my, my conditioning and practice has gotten a lot better. And, mm-hmm. uh, it's, uh, we've been working on that for the last couple months, it's been a big emphasis for Pat and, uh, the other coaches. So just making sure like, but the, again, the focus is in March. So it, right now it's just nerves and getting, getting back into wrestling and uh, I'm not too worried about anything like that. How early last season did you hurt your knee and how did the injury occur? It was actually during, uh, so we have our last practice of, uh, the, the, when I, the day I tore my ACL will be a one year anniversary tomorrow. So it was the very last practice, the very last, uh, minute of the practice where before we left for Christmas break. So it was, yeah, it was pretty rough. I went home, uh, like right after practice, Pat was just like, go home, see how you feel when you get back. We'll see. We'll see if we need to get it looked at. I went home. I tried working out. It didn't feel right. Mm -hmm. We wrestled in Florida. It didn't feel right there. And I wrestled pretty poorly. And then, uh, so then we decided to get it looked at, but we, we wanted to make sure like we didn't want to get looked at before, uh, the Ohio state duel just because there wasn't really that much time to do it. So I went and wrestled, uh, in the Ohio state duel against Martin that didn't go how we wanted it to. So we got an MRI looked at and that's when we knew that I tore my ACL and my meniscus. Was it a tougher mental or physical challenge wrestling with that? Um, so I felt like before I got, before I knew that there was something wrong with it, it was more of a physical challenge because I couldn't, I, I feel like it was really hard for me to come up on shots and it was really difficult for me to, like use my leg completely, which was frustrating, but not like, it wasn't like a mental toll. I just thought like, we thought at most I tore my meniscus or something. It'd be a six week recovery and I'd be back for NCAs. And, uh, and at least we just thought it was, I tweaked something. And so it was pretty surprising to go in like to when Pat met with me to explain what happened. It was uh kind of a surprise. And, but mm-hmm. we were, we knew that we were going to wrestle just because I wasn't going to get a medical. There was no, I'd already wrestled too much of the season, but we also already knew that like I could win matches. Like I beat Chip Ness twice and mm-hmm. I knew I could win those matches if I just, but it, it was pretty mentally taxing to have to come in like every day and have to wrestle different than everyone else in the room. I couldn't do the same kind of workouts. I couldn't uh, lift like everyone else. And so it kind of over time, like over those three months, it was a lot of mentally uh, taxing stuff. So I'd say in the end it was probably mental, but mm-hmm. at the beginning it was definitely like I physically couldn't do a lot of things, uh, that I wanted to. So that was pretty frustrating. The lefty headlock was still on the table. Though. Yes, it was. I, I had a lot of headlocks. <laughs> I haven't really, I'm trying to stay away from headlocks right now, just so I get back into shooting and stuff, but we'll definitely be bringing some headlocks back to Reynolds. <laughs> Have you guys decided on the Southern scuffle yet for yourself? Yeah, I'll be going. My dad's already heading out, and he'll, I'll see him there, so that'll be good. Um, yeah, I'm going to wrestle there. I might not, you know, we'll, we'll see how it goes, but I feel good in practice. I feel tough. I feel mm-hmm. conditioned. My knee feels fine, so there's no reason not to. Like, I've been cleared in every way, and I I just need to get uh, back into wrestling. I was going to say, I noticed no brace. Your decision, doctors, or you just don't care for the um, brace? We just... We didn't come, we decided not to come back until I could wrestle without one anyways. Okay. So like there would be no risk. We didn't want any, you know, like we could have probably come back earlier and put on a brace mm-hmm. and like taking it really quickly like that. But we, we decided that if we had to wear a brace, it was too much of a risk mm-hmm. in the first place and that we shouldn't be wrestling. So no brace, there's no need for one. Uh, the biggest thing right now is like my knees are pretty raw just because I haven't been shooting on them. So I, have, I wear a knee pad in practice, but it's not really for, I don't really wear them uh, in turn in uh, matches or anything. How much are you driven to get that all American accolade this season? Well, I really, I, I think I can win this year. Uh, you know, I've wrestled with a lot of these guys before. Um, you know, there's, there's no real pressure to be uh, an all American or uh national champ because I know I can do it. Mm-hmm. I know I've beat guys who have been there. I know that it's something I'm capable of doing. Now I just need to go do it. And I'm, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm expecting myself to be in the finals this year. That is the expectation. Anything lower than that is going to be disappointing, but 
I wanted to get you out of here on this, another student athlete perspective. Um, early this podcast, we broke the not so secret news. Melissa Simmons was leaving the Wolfpack wrestling program. Their director of ops position defines the behind the scenes roles. How much do you guys appreciate her hard work and how she helps this team out? Yeah. I mean, Melissa has been really great. She does a lot of things that a lot of people don't really realize. And so it, she's been fantastic in everything that she's done. Uh, and beyond that, she's just a good person. She's cool to be around. So it's, she's definitely going to be missed. Uh, I know I, I've heard good things about the person replacing her, but, uh, I think, I think definitely she will be missed. So I do wish her the best though. And, uh, wherever she goes next. You're a good storyteller. She refuses to come on the podcast for rebuttal. Any good travel or everyday stories that you've encountered with Melissa? You got, I, I won't it. say you butt heads, but there has been some disagreements here and there in the past. Spirited. Melissa? Uh, <laughs> I don't know what I'm allowed to say on here. Well, that's the thing. Um, this is a PG podcast. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you already talked politics, so that's out the window. Oh, sorry about that. <laughs> I mean, I didn't really say anything. What I actually no, I said that we, we did talk about it, True. but um, no, I don't really have anything too much other than that she has been pretty, like, if I've ever needed anything, she has definitely mm -hmm. been right on top of it. She's been helpful about it, and uh, wherever she's going is getting a good, a good one, so... Nick, thanks for jumping on the podcast. I'm really glad you're back in line. You can't believe how many people were asking constantly when you were coming back, so can't wait to watch your season unfold. Yep, thank you. I want to thank everybody for listening today. This is your Pack Mentality Poppins podcast covering all things NC State Wrestling. Until next time, Wolfpack Wrestling fans, go Pack! The Pack Mentality Poppins podcast is produced by the Matt Talk Podcast Network. For more wrestling podcasts, go to matttalkonline.com.